Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything yet. I'm just going to get your point of view. You can see I've got Nikki LaRose here. Hi. She is a pro makeup artist and I point this out because we're gonna take a look at TikTok makeup trends and get her perspective. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. We have yeah. so many good ones to watch. Mm -hmm. I have so many thoughts. It's a list. Yes. All right, so I wanna point out first. Yeah. We're gonna be looking at some videos. We're not necessarily calling out that specific creator when we're mm -hmm. talking about these trends. A lot of these we just gathered. There are definitely a couple of you know things I've seen that I'm like, ugh. And I just want to completely trash it yeah. because it's just so annoying. But I think that's the nature of TikTok, especially. Yeah. There is an algorithm. I really do understand when creators follow a trend mm -hmm. because this is the game you play when you're a creator on these social media platforms. Mm -hmm. They want you to follow the algorithm. I just think it's really interesting to deep dive some of these trends and just discuss like, what's good about them, what you can actually like realistically utilize in your daily makeup. Because I mean, some of these are gimmicky and that's just kind of like the nature of it, right? And like, you, yeah. you kind of have to take some of these makeup trends when you, especially when you see them on TikTok with a grain of salt. Yeah. Let's get into it. Let's mm -hmm. yeah. jump into the first one. I'm okay. excited. Okay, so this first one is gym lips. And yeah. both of us, like, I, I think I talked to you or you sent it to me or something and we were just like, eye roll. Yeah, right? I, I like, couldn't help but laugh when you said gym lips because when I first heard about it too, I was like, Gym lips? Yeah. I'm like, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Well, let's actually watch this with everybody so that they can see what we're talking about. Yes. And then we'll get into it. Okay. The gym lips trend. Have you ever heard of gym lips? No? Well, we're trying it today. The term comes from Kelly Ann MUA. She was heading to the gym, so she shared her favorite no makeup makeup lip combo, which consists of a lip liner that matches your exact lip color. Then a lip treatment. Not a lip gloss, not a lipstick, but like a lip mask. The combo is perfect for the gym or for for everyday errands, makes your lips look super plump and juicy, but not makeup-y. After rummaging through every lip liner that I have, I finally found one that matches my lip color. I'm gonna line my lips with Makeup by Mario's Hue lip liner. So Kellyanne said she does a little overlining. That color, spot on. Now for the lip treatment, I'm gonna be using the Rode Peptide Lip Treatment, the scent. Okay, why is that literally so perfect? They look really full and plump from the lip liner and like the treatment is doing its thing. Really like the idea of this. To me, this is perfect for every day. Gym lips. I have so much to say about this. I mean, I think I've been doing this since I was in eighth grade. Yeah, if I could be honest. Yeah. We, how long have we been doing this? We, I mean, we've had this like, well, we have like our we secrets. We do skincare. Yeah. yeah. So we do skincare videos, right? And so a lot of the time people will be like, oh, what are you wearing on your lips? Mm -hmm. While I'm like putting on my moisturizer or yeah. something like that, right? Yeah. And all it is is a little bit of lip liner and a lip balm. And so it's so funny because like this just took me back to, because we've been filming for like how many years? Like eight, seven years? Together? Yeah. Like seven, a long eight time. Years, yeah. Yeah. And so we, one of my tricks that I did for Susan like years and years and years ago it was when she would do her skincare videos or when she was doing anything on camera where she had no makeup on. Mm -hmm. We're trying to look a little pretty. Like, you know, I mean, come on, when you put yourself on the internet, like, you know, who doesn't want to have like yeah. a, a little like leg up, you know, like yeah. a little something, something. So you yeah. just feel like, so not that completely bare. But so one of the things I would do, I would get a really, really natural lip liner. So we would do this, like, it was like our, it was our little secret. Like yeah. I would do a little bit of lip liner, I'd blend it out a little bit. And then we put like either a clear lip balm or sometimes if we were getting fancy, I would do like a slight tinted lip balm just to like bring the natural color of Susan's lips out mm -hmm. for those on camera moments. Yeah, for Just sure. to like give her like that little extra something, you know? And just so you guys know, we never actually put makeup on my skin. No. We're doing like, we'll like maybe like fill in my brows, maybe. This is what we did. We would fill in your brows the teeniest bit, like the undetected Curl amount. my lashes. Curl, exactly. Curl no mascara. Lashes. Just curl them. Yep. And then, and then the gym, gym lips. Gym lips. <laughs> I think this becomes annoying to us because it's being it's being given a name as if like no one it knew never existed. this existed, yeah. right? The only thing that it is gets like a little cringy is like these these techniques are they're tried and a lot of these are tried and true. So yeah. or some of these are tried and true, right? Well, some Especially, of this is like this was a no brainer. Like this is a no brainer. But, but sometimes it's not. But it's a good trend. Trend. It's I just hate not to a say trend. the word trend. It's That's, just it's a really cool trick. It's a makeup trick and it's been around forever. Utilize it because man, it will give you such a little confidence boost when you're not wearing makeup or when you're going to the gym, just like yeah. she started with. This next one. You and I, because we've been behind the scenes, me as a producer, you yeah. as a makeup artist, 
We have a lot to say about this because this is real life. This is not yes. a trend. It's called model eyeliner hack. Got ready with me to go get fresh digital. Sorry, I'm flipping you off. Finished my nails at 2 a.m. Oh my God, I'm so tired. I haven't even washed my face. There's a method to my madness. Now we wash your face. It's one of the best tricks. Digitals is about how would you show up on set? We're going for early Calvin Klein vibes. As we see it. <laughs> my hair out last night and slept with it in a clip. We blew out the mohawk for volume. We're emulating bad head, okay? I mean, she's beautiful. Shoot, she's yeah. pretty. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, <laughs> she's, I mean, she's gorgeous. That was yes. gorgeous. Actually, the, the final look was really, really gorgeous. Mm -hmm. The thing we want to point out, there was like even an article in Birdie and stuff of people yeah. doing this model eyeliner hack, and it was exactly what she did right at the beginning. Yes. And it was, she put full on eyeliner around like her eyes. Then she washed her face, so it left mm -hmm. the eyeliner basically as like a tight line, yeah. right? But like a night before I hit the club last yeah, night, and, and I, I just had like my a sultry face. eye left over. Yeah, and, yes. And I didn't, I didn't wash my face. Like I just rolled yeah. out of bed afterwards. Couldn't be bothered to wash my face. Yeah. So let me tell you something. This is um, triggering for me as a <laughs> as a producer. I'm sure as a makeup artist, and I'll actually kind of defend it slightly. But in real life, when you are a producer hiring models, when you're a makeup artist mm -hmm. dealing with models, they actually show up with their faces dirty mm -hmm. from the day before, sometimes days before. Like yeah. they'll tell you they haven't washed their faces mm -hmm. since the last time they had their makeup done. I have actually had models come in, you know, like our shoots, when we're doing like a client video shoot mm -hmm. or a photo shoot, they can start really early, what? five, six a.m. Yeah. So I get it. Like they're they're rolling out of bed, coming in really, really early, mm -hmm. and you'll be like, "You already have makeup on. We asked you to come in with yeah. a clean face, right? Yeah. A clean face, ready to go for the makeup artist." And they'll be like, "Oh, uh, I loved my makeup so much yesterday or two days ago that yeah. I haven't washed it yet." So to clarify, I think you think it's we think it's triggering, triggering because as two people that work you know behind the scenes for the last like over a decade, like two decades almost you as a producer of music makeup bars, when we see models come in, they have like this visible leftover makeup and like like residue of makeup and like, oh, powder and like ha makeup in their hairline that happens all the time. It's triggering because, not because we're jerks, but it's triggering because it slows us down. Yes. It slows down our entire day because then we're- Like it can we're add having to like take, an hour. Yeah, we're having to take all this extra time to like really prep the model and really make sure their skin is clean and really make sure that it's in the right place it needs to be before I put that fresh makeup application on. And sometimes it takes Don't you upwards just have like 30 makeup minutes. Wipe? Don't you have a makeup yeah, and then you're, wipe? I'm like, yeah, that defeats the purpose. Like you're, you're supposed to come with a really clean face. That way it just kind of eliminates it's not that. Irritated. It's something that we have seen forever. Forever. It's forever. Not, it's definitely not a trend. It's a mistake yeah. that young models have been doing for years and where you know, they expect the, yeah. the, the, the staff, the team, to fix it. I mean, I get the idea behind what she's doing. I do okay. get it. Well, okay, so we actually, because I went into my rant right away because I'm so like triggered by it. <laughs> we have PTSD from this. So her whole point for this was models aren't supposed to wear makeup when they go in for auditions. And castings, yeah. And castings yeah. and everything. And so she's just kind of doing Exactly what a we're no talking makeup, about. Makeup well, look. she's doing what most young models I would see do. They would show up for the casting, mm -hmm. right? And they, they're supposed to have clean faces, but like they just used a makeup wiper, didn't wash their face the night before. Mm -hmm. and and they, left, they left over, they had that leftover had, eye like, makeup. Some it's, crustiness like around their eyes yeah. and stuff like that. And, and like to them, that's a clean face. It, is this a trend? No. no. And this actually, is not a trend. I, don't, I don't even like the thought of encouraging anybody to put on eyeliner and then, and then wash, wash your their face. face There's just in. such a better way to do that. Yeah, it's tight lining. Just yeah, tight, tight lining or diffuse it with a brush. I have a better idea. Okay. Skip that. You're gonna get the exact same effect. Honestly, swear to, swear to you, you'll get the exact same effect if you just take a good smudger brush and a dark brown shadow or even like a charcoal shadow and you just lightly smudge it on your lash line. It will give you the same look minus the weird order and and like certain, like song and dance to get to that look. You know, you'll skip yeah. all that and you'll have a much cleaner canvas to, yeah. to wear throughout yeah. the day. All right, so instead of ranting. <laughs> I, I can't promise that we're not gonna rant about this next one because I have a lot to say about you it. You have a lot to say about it, but it is a real technique. Yes. Right? It is and a, a good solid, one. And one solid that I've technique. seen you do even on me before. Yeah, I've done it before. for years. It is the Mary Phillips, I'll call it the Mary Phillips makeup technique. Yeah. But in reality, it is called. Underpainting. And it's been around since like, 
the the dawn of nineteen twenty. Let's just throw that out there. It's been around for a it's long time. A that might not be accurate. Well, but it's let's been watch for a it. Long time. Let's watch it. Let's watch it. Hey everyone, I'm Mary Phillips. I am loving everyone's videos recreating my technique. So a little behind this technique, to me, it makes more sense. It's like laying down the bones under the skin. So the contour and the highlight being the bones and the skin being the foundation. Here we go. Beautiful, she's stunning. Gorgeous. I remember the first time I saw her on camera. If you guys don't know, Mary Phillips is a celebrity makeup artist. She's even worked on like Jennifer Lopez. Oh, she um, works on her consistently. Yeah. She's amazing. Yeah, like she works on so many different yeah. people and she does an amazing job and she's also just gorgeous herself. I'm gonna throw out there, Nikki has taught me how to underpaint and I never do it because <laughs> I actually think it's hard to do. Like to do it right without like buffing yeah. it all out afterwards. Like, right, right. So Mary showed us obviously the concept. I like yeah. that she said that it's like, like creating the bones underneath the makeup. Yeah. But you know, like explain it to us a little bit. I mean, first of all, I just want to like say this when I, when I saw that it was, you know, it's being called a trend, it's, this is where, this is my only problem that I have with TikTok is like, not everything is a trend. Some of these are techniques that have been around for, like I said, like for ages and ages, since like the beginning of film. This is one of those old, old school makeup artist tricks and techniques that has been utilized for God knows how long. And, the only thing that bothers me is I don't like hearing it being referred to as a trend because it's not a trend. Well, it's a killer and, and, technique. Yeah, and and to be fair, I don't think Mary referred to no, it as no. a trend. She said, this no. is what I do. No, she said that's her base makeup routine, right? But everyone is jumping on it, saying that it's her trend and blah, blah, blah. It's not a trend, so just to bring clarification and then I'll stop ranting about that. So a deep dive about like why this is such a good Technique. I'm going to call it a technique. I'm refusing to call it a trend because she really does explain it well. She's it's it's very easy to understand what she's trying to accomplish. She is basically creating a bone structure underneath your makeup. So when you put your makeup on top, your bone structure is being brought out and it actually in the end, it's a much more natural way to contour your face because you're seeing that contour or like that bronzing product or whatever product you're using, right? It's typically, it's gonna be a cream, it has to be a cream. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing that cream shine through rather than seeing it visibly sitting on top. It's actually a great technique to utilize if you're someone who wants to have more of a natural makeup look, but still have like that soft, like model type bone structure coming from within. So keep that in mind if you're someone who is like wanting that kind of look with your makeup and you wanna have like a soft, sculpted, chiseled, you know, beautiful bone structure from within type look rather than seeing it sit on top visibly. This is the holy grail. And something else to point out is if you wanna wear less makeup overall, like less foundation, less concealer, less bronzer on top, utilize this technique because you'll end up using so much less product. Mm, because essentially you're gonna put like cream bronzer, cream contour, it, those are highly pigmented formulas. So you put those down first and that's actually giving you an instant amount of coverage. So mm -hmm. it's giving you coverage around all those areas that you just saw, forehead, cheek, nose, jawline, whatever, where, wherever you're gonna put it, eyes. And then you put your foundation on top and so you're using so much less product because you're just kind of filling in the puzzle piece. Listen, it's a, I'm a makeup artist. I've known about this technique. I've utilized it for the last 15 years. It's a killer technique. I just don't want to hear it being referred to as a trend. Okay, so this next one, <laughs> I, I gotta admit, I don't even know what this is. Crying girl, crying makeup? This is a really entertaining one to watch. Oh, well, let's let's watch it. Yeah. Crying girl. Why are you crying girl? <laughs> so this one is for the unstable girlies. You know how we look good when we cry? It just comes with the territory. Um, but anyway, if you're not in the mood to cry, here's how to get the liquid makeup. Okay, so we want that puffy soft lip, right? We're going in with a soft spoken lip by M Cosmetics, blurring the edges with a brush and then going back in with a neutral liner. Next, it's really a monochromatic moment. I'm going in with a double cheeked up palette by Fenty Beauty, over my eyes, under my eyes, on my cheeks, and of course, my nose. Next, we're recreating that glisten in our eyes with some liquid glitter on the bottom lash line and my favorite vinyl effect by About Face. Put it where you want shine. The cupid's bow is a great area. The lashes got to be curled, okay? It just completes the look, but most of all, the gloss. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay, but first off, I think she looked really pretty. I think that's oh, why yeah. I'm like torn about this. Well, but she's beautiful. She is beautiful. Um, she looked really pretty, and there was like a 
youthfulness about it. Mm -hmm. I don't think I look pretty when I cry. I like, in fact, I refuse to cry. Like there are two things I refuse to do, even if I need to, and that is to cry or throw up. I <laughs> relate to that so much. <laughs> like even when I'm sick, I will not throw I will not throw up because I hate the feeling of throwing up. It's, it's traumatizing. Like terrible. Yeah. But I also hate how I look when I cry mm -hmm. because you do get that like swollen look. Like, uh, even when I'm just sitting there watching a movie and I start crying. Uh, I but know. I'm like, why? I know. Why? I'm like, oh, I don't want to cry. If I cry in front of someone, I, I will probably never see you again. Yeah. I never want to see you again if I cry in front of you. So, and I also look horrible when I cry. I hate I, I look, look really tore I up I mean, there are memes of Kim Kardashian crying because it's not yes. her best look. Yeah. But this girl, and I'm sure like all these young, really young people, like, yeah, they probably look beautiful because like, well, they're, they're all like, so they look good. Out, like, like they look good doing anything. They look good at their yeah. age. You yeah, could throw like you they know. could do nothing. They roll. She yeah. looks beautiful when she started. I have to say, I really love like the like the pinkish, magenta-ish, monochromatic eyeshadow look. Loved it. Yes, but it was the gloss around the eye and then the glitter on the bottom that mm -hmm. like t took it over the edge. Like I feel like you could take that trend and you could refine it a little bit and yeah. like pull a couple elements back to make, make it, it look really daily. like, yeah. Yeah, so like if you want to take that makeup look and like make it an actual wearable makeup look where you didn't look ridiculous, might skip the gloss and maybe skip the glitter or just put the glitter maybe in the center of the top lid. So like that light catches in the center and it gives you like that little like more pop angelic. and sparkle. I think it's more like it make it more angelic. Yeah, less, it bordered on yeah, less fragile. I haven't slept and I'm like more like yeah, okay, like it went from like you can go angelic because it almost went angelic. Yes, and I, I love the lip too. Yeah, the lip yeah. was beautiful. Beautiful. Instead though, it went fragile. Like if you want to actually wear that trend, skip the eye gloss, yeah. refine it a little bit. Maybe maybe spot powder to some areas of your face so you have some more balance. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, it could be it could be really pretty yep. and wearable. Yep, could be. All right, the last one. I have thoughts about it. I'm gonna actually let you go first. This is back to matte. Basically meaning that matte makeup is coming back instead of yep. glossy, like dewy makeup, right? Yep. Yes. So anyway, let's watch this. Let's watch. Okay. Charlotte Tilbury is bringing out matte liquid blushes, guys. When I saw this this morning on Trend Mood, I literally gasped. The queen of glow herself is bringing out matte products. This is not a drill. These brands are very, very smart and they know what they're doing. So this tells me that they know that there's going to be a trend of matte skin and the glowy skin phase is going to be left in 2022. Well, at least that's what I think they're predicting. So with that being said, even though I love glowy skin so much, let's do an all matte skin because maybe just maybe this is going to be the new thing, the new trend. I'm still going to prep my skin as I usually would. This is the Caudalie Vino Perfect Serum. I couldn't find any like matte moisturizers, but I think it's fine to just use any. I'm just going to use this one. Oh, from the Inky List. I found this mattifying primer from Smashbox that we're going to use. The foundation that I'm going to use is the Fenty Beauty Soft Matte Foundation. I don't own a lot of soft matte or matte foundation, so we're going to use this one. The shade that I have in this is shade 150. Okay, this foundation is literally flawless, but I don't really know how I feel about this look because I already feel like I just want to add some moisture and glow back into my skin. Here's a question for you. Do you think that Charlotte Tilbury are bringing out these blushes because they know that there's going to be a matte skin trend or because they're trying to set one? For concealer, I'm going to use a touch of the HMB one because this is quite a matte full coverage concealer. Jesus Christ, I forgot how good this concealer is. What the hell? I don't even feel like I really need it, but I'm just gonna pop a little bit of the Charlotte Tilbury pressed powder under my eyes. I am not hating this look, but I feel very flat. Like I feel very like, I look like a picture, like an A4 piece of paper, do you know what I mean? I found this matte blush from Colourpop. It's a powder blush and I'm just gonna pop a little bit of that on. Okay, I feel better now I've got the blush on. I feel like it's giving me a little bit more colour and I actually don't hate it. I feel like I look very flawless, like a porcelain doll. <laughs> right, let's finish this off with a nice matte lip. These P. Louise lip bases really are something else. This one is in the shade Solo Nude. Right, so this is the finished matte skin look. What do we think? <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything yet. I'm just gonna get your point of view. So I've actually been saying for the last two years that I, I see the tide is going to turn. Like I could just see it, I feel it. Like people are gonna get so over having drippy, glossy, overly glossy 
skin, like overly dewy skin, yeah. right? Especially for people that have oily skin naturally, it could be like an uncomfortable way to wear your makeup because you just feel like it's just too much. So I've been seeing this and like predicting this in my own head for the last two years. So I feel very validated that this is now coming to surface because I do see that is going to be like the tide that turns, right? Like we're gonna see a ton of matte makeup trends. In fact, a couple of my clients even have started requesting like more matte skin in general on that. That's how I knew like, okay, this is gonna start to take off, not just in my own head, but like other people are starting to feel like that need to just change, you know? I think it's cool. It definitely takes me back to like 10 years ago when matte makeup was just the standard. Like everyone had more matte makeup. Everyone wore like a medium to full coverage, matte finish makeup, everyone baked everyone put a lot of powder on their skin powder highlighters powder all that stuff right so it just takes me back a decade i'm excited to see the the change in like in this trend but you don't have to go overboard with it yeah that is true that so is what true. are your thoughts well to, okay so what do you think is matte like do you would you say your makeup today is matte yeah actually i was gonna point that out too like i woke up today and i chose matte you know <laughs> but i did for camera purposes i did put like a little bit of powder highlight on my cheeks just so i don't look completely flat and there's a difference too like you can wear a majority matte face but in my opinion i think it's still best to not go overboard with anything with glowy skin or fully matte skin yeah bring in some balance just to give your makeup a more dimension so yeah. you don't look flat so i think matte of yesteryear will never come back like i think i think that of, feels very yesteryear yeah to me. like i think matte makeup of like you know our early days mm -hmm. like cracky dry like eh, my yeah. face like it accentuates your wrinkles even when you're 20 like that kind of thing yeah i think that will never come back and the reason why is because i think we know too much now like yeah, I think yeah, we've learned absolutely. so much more about skincare, about how to mm -hmm. accentuate and not accentuate the, the things that bother us, right? Yes. Accentuate the things that we love, not accentuate the things we hate, right? Yeah. About our own faces. And I think that especially for mature, like people who are maturing, women who are maturing, mm -hmm. men that are maturing, we've started to learn that having glowy skin will make us look more youthful. Less yes. makeup makes us look more youthful, yeah. right? So as I age, I know that I will never go back to full matte, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's impossible. You'll never get me to go back to full matte. Yeah. And I'm a person that says never say never. I will never go back to full matte. Mm -hmm. Now, do I think, and I've thought for a while, just like you, like aspects of matte will come back in and out. Absolutely. You know, like right now we're going back to glossy lips, mm -hmm. right? But matte lips will come right back, oh, right? Yeah. Definitely. I have when matte it, lips on right now. Yeah, exactly. But you know, like when it comes to like full matte makeup, I think it's impossible. I don't think it will ever, ever come back. Like I don't know anybody who's like, I just want to look like a pancake face now. Yeah. And it's true. It's exactly what you said and what she said. It's like that whole like flat looking. She felt very flat right yeah. away. Yeah. And everything is HD now. Think about this, right? Yeah. Like the way people used to do makeup, lighting wasn't the same, cameras weren't the mm -hmm. same, all of that, right? So you used to like go f like really high coverage makeup, yeah, right? to look flawless. To look flawless on mm -hmm. camera. But now, I mean, we have HD cameras on our phones, right? Yeah. And so nobody wants to look like that because it will accentuate yeah. your wrinkles. But for me, it's like, it just goes back to like balance. If you're afraid of this trend and you're afraid of like this matte makeup revolution coming around and like, you don't want to like jump on that trend, you don't have to, but maybe try utilizing a couple more matte products into your overall makeup look so you can feel a part of the trend if you want to, to each their own, you know, yeah. like makeup is so subjective, like do what you feel confident in. But what I suggest is if you want to go for the matte makeup look, just throw some balancing elements in there. So like she even, for example, had like a glittery eyeliner. And for some reason, that glittery eyeliner gave her like some, like a wet quality to her makeup look. And it kind of threw in like a little hint of balance. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't completely flat. Like she had some element in there to like pop. So take that for example and utilize that, right? So if you're gonna do a matte base, do like a really glowy, beautiful powder highlighter if you want and do like a glossy lip just to throw that balance in there. Well, and actually this is why glossy lips were so popular back in the day is because the rest of our face was so, so matte. Yes. And high coverage. I definitely saw this trend coming. I'm not surprised. I think Charlotte Tilbury is killer and I'm, I'm not surprised that they're launching these ahead of the trend. Like, yeah. They're and, smart. And, yeah. They probably have a team of people that are like looking into the upcoming trends and they're trying to figure like forecast it and figure it out. And I'm not surprised. Like when I yeah. saw that, I was like, oh, okay. You know, I think that's a great way to kind of end this video. And that's the reminder that just because it's yeah. a trend yeah. does not mean 
you need to do it. Do what works for you. I think that's the best thing about seeing all these trends come out is you can try some stuff yeah. and whatever you like, you can cherry pick what works for you. And I think yeah. that's the real way to be doing your makeup, not following trends. Do you think that we should do another one of these? I think there's so many more that we should talk about. So I, yes. Uh, you know, we actually have so many on a list. We're gonna go ahead and shoot a part two right now. If you guys like this video, let us know in the comments below and stay tuned for part two of TikTok makeup trends. Ooh, I can't wait. <laughs> Bye. Bye.